Yeah, yeah, you Navy pilots think you're such hotshots because you can land on a boat, while the Air Force guys have to land on a runway that doesn't move. Well, maybe it's time we showed those Navy pukes what's what and prove that you can turn an Air Force jet like an F-16 Viper into a carrier-based aircraft, at least in DCS. Yeah, you and the H called the Fighting Falcon. Shut up, it's the Viper. I've never served in the Air Force, but I'm pretty sure that if they catch you calling the F-16 a Fighting Falcon, they are required by regulations to beat your ass. A few miles out, we radio with a carrier who informs us that our shenanigans are against regulations. You are not authorized to land. Not authorized? Your ass isn't authorized. I don't know what that means. The Viper has a tail hook for use in emergency landings, and it turns out that you can use this tail hook to catch one of the carrier's arresting wires. Despite my rather dubious approach, I managed to snag the three wire. Now, I have no idea if this would actually work in real life. For one thing, the F-16's landing gear isn't really designed for the hard impact of Navy-style landings, and second, I don't know if the tail hook can withstand the tension typically applied to the arresting wires, but we can definitely say that it works in DCS at least. But landing on a carrier is just one half of the experiment. We need to be able to take off again, otherwise we're stuck here on a boat filled with sailors. Problem is, Navy jets use steam-powered catapults to take off, and this requires that their landing gear have a launch bar to connect it to the catapult shuttle. Our F-16 doesn't have that, so we'll have to find another way. It turns out that the solution is rather simple. An F-16 carrying no external stores has an extremely high thrust-to-weight ratio, so maybe we can use the entire length of the carrier's deck as a runway. Once lowered, you can't raise the F-16's tail hook again, which means we can't start our takeoff roll from behind the arresting wires, otherwise the tail hook will get snagged on them. So, we steer our way past the landing signal officer station, which is now empty, as the LSO is presently getting blackout drunk on account of the stupidity he's being forced to witness, and then we line ourselves up. We throttle up while holding down the wheel brakes, and then push the throttle forward to full afterburner. We have so much thrust that we easily reach 150 knots by the time we roll over the front of the carrier, which is more than enough to keep us in the air. Of course, a jet without external ordnance isn't terribly useful, despite what Pierre Spray might have you believe, so I'm going to repeat this experiment, this time with our jet carrying two external fuel tanks, four AMRAMs, and two Sidewinders. Once again, we managed to land successfully, but when we try to take off, our additional weight is just a little bit too much and we end up flying into the water. Undeterred, I give it another go, landing the jet on the carrier, and then I go and position myself between the island and the arrestor cables, thinking that this will give me a bit more room to work with. And sure enough, as soon as we clear the end of the flight deck, I give the plane full back stick, which is enough to get us airborne, thus proving that you can, in DCS at least, turn a Viper into a carrier-based aircraft.